Welcome to podcast number four of Base Talk with Hagen and Hayes. Today's topic is František Simandl. So, Susan Hagen, how did you first encounter Simandl? Well, David Hayes, I think he was the first thing I ever learned on the base. <laughs> I worked through some like a tune a day and string builder little books at first, yeah. but my very first dedicated to the double bass etude book, I would probably call it, um, was the New Method book one. And it was yeah. edited by Stuart Sankey and it had a blue cover. And I say that because there's a new edition with an orange cover. Um, it's actually very different. Um, I've noticed that that edition with the orange cover, some of the etudes have been like watered down or simplified mm -hmm. and it makes me sad. <laughs> But my first teacher gave me this book and she said, this is the bass Bible. And everything you need to know about how to play the bass is in this book. So I was really excited. I didn't know there was a bass Bible. But I have to say, all these years later, I think it still holds up. I think I it's, agree. it's I agree. great. It's smart. It gives you mm. a really good understanding of the layout of the fingerboard and of a good, clean, efficient fingering system. Um, and of course, then I, I push my healthy left hand ideas on my students at the same time. But um, I think it, it locks in a lot of things. Now, how did you first encounter it? Um, it was the only uh, book we had at school. I started playing when I was 14. Mm -hmm. um, I remember saying to my director of music, I was starting bass lessons, and she said, oh, I, I think we've got a, a bass book in here. She found it. And it was uh, Simandl Book One, but the really old edition. Mm. Um, and it had been bound, really nice. And in the front, it, uh, there was a signature and an address by who'd owned it before. Um, and I did this. And the amazing thing during lockdown, I did a bit of research and I found this, this place where this man lived. And there was a, um, a website or a, a page for the, the, the village. And so I just, I said, I'm looking for... And suddenly all these people got back to me and they knew that they knew the house where he'd lived. And someone said, oh, yeah, he, he played in the local orchestra, uh, which is still going. And they found a photograph of him. And I, I think he died. I think he died in the 1930s. So that's oh, wow. how old the book is. Yeah. Um, and then I discovered that his wife, his widow, had moved to um, the, the, the village where I went to school. And she don't, I started playing in 74, and I think she died in 71, 72. So she must have donated, or somebody donated the music oh, to yeah. the school. So two or that three years cool. later, I suddenly inherited this book, which I still have. It's a, a treasured possession. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think nowadays, it, it Samandal seems a little bit dry and dusty. Yeah. But the amazing thing is, it was published, I think, 1874, 75. On the whole, Base technique hasn't changed that much right. in all that time, and scales have remained the same. Yeah. And a lot of it is still really valuable today. I I think because he did such a good job, we've been able to to move on from it. Yeah. So it's like he's old fashioned, and people think he's old fashioned. When I think he was a pioneer. Yeah, I think it's amazing because I say to my students, okay, the etudes might be slightly formulaic. You're doing something. Mm. You go up in intervals and then there's often a double line and then it's sort of an, it's an inversion yeah. on the way back yeah. down but it's amazingly helpful and i do like that they're a little bit the etudes are a little bit predictable like there's a pattern mm. so if you, something sounds weird you've probably made a mistake which is yes. i think really helpful for a student practicing on their own for a week and I say to them, if it sounds funny and it doesn't resolve in the next note or two, go back and double check. You might have made a mistake. But um, I I was looking I was looking through my stuff. I realized I have like I think four different editions of the New Method Book One. There's a German edition. Of course you there's, do. There's of course I do. <laughs> there's this really cool German edition, and then there's that edition that's the newest one with orange covers in Japanese and in English. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is easiest for people to get. Yes. I asked Berkeley to stock in their bookstore the one that I had, which was Stuart Sankey's editions. But I'll tell you, when I got to college, I had said to Ed Barker, my teacher, I've used this new method, book one, you know, because he wanted to see what I had mm -hmm. used for technique studies. And he said, great, we're going to start it again at the very beginning. 
And I thought, oh no, I'm taking a hit. And we worked through the entire book one and New Method book two. Right. Um, and then I started the Gratis and Parnassum books and continued those. When I was done with grad school, I felt like that was still moving my technique forward. I'll tell you, book two, New Method book two, they're longer etudes. They're a lot more mm. musical. They're kind of nice. I like book two. When I moved to my second teacher, uh, we then progressed towards the end of book one and then he liked book two so I I bought a copy of book two yeah. um and I I liked it. I, I think I did most of it and then during lockdown mm -hmm. I suddenly had time and I got all these methods and, and books of studies out which I haven't done for I don't know 20 30 years yeah. and I went through the whole of, of Sir Mandel book two and I loved it unfortunately yeah. I the edition I had was quite old so mm -hmm. the fingerings were um, of their time but yes. I was able to just over, override that um, because I could come up with better fingerings than than they were in the book but it, I loved it absolutely loved it I really enjoyed um, yeah. revisiting things like that yeah. but I also then also had um, the Mengele studies which I'd never done oh those are but hard the, yeah and uh, what else Cherny because I, I, mm. I from the, the Czech school, so I, yes. I did Chen as well. So it, it was interesting how each one approached the bass in a different way. And the Mengele I liked because that was Botticini. That's all about lyricism and using the the entire yeah. range of the bass. Whereas Simandl and Cherny were much more technical, much right. more uh, bass like orchestral maybe um, scale right. arpeggios. And I remember Posh to say my teacher in Prague, he said that Cherny the method and books of studies and, and caprices were more musical than Simandl. So he'd yeah. taken it a step further. And I, I think that was right. And that I enjoyed mixing all these different styles together. Yeah. But the Simandl, I, I came back to, and I, I really loved it. I love them. Do you know what I do now? Here's true confessions. So oh. I will skip around. I don't love starting my students in half position on the E string, um, which is the beginning of that new method book one. And that's how I started. But man, yes. you feel very weak uh, yeah. in not a good way. <laughs> and I, it's, I find it to be a little discouraging for, for younger or newer players. So yes. I sort of skip around in that book a little bit. But I use your George's Great Adventures book alongside, oh and it gets them around the fingerboard a little bit more because George's Great Adventures, um, Adventures of George and, and George's Grand Tour, yeah. they really get you all over the fingerboard because I find Samandal, except for the scales, hmm. takes you a little while to get into like second, third positions. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and um, so I like to do a mixture now, which is really fun. Because I started with Samandl, and I'm sure you're the same, you spend three months in half position. Yes. And then you spend three months in first position, yeah. and, which there's nothing wrong with it because it's, it's right. still all, all good technique. But that's the one thing I try and do with my students is get them out of first position early. Um, yes. And the young ones, I'll, I'll always start in fourth position now. Yeah, yeah. But then I can write a piece for them. You know, I write them a, a study. So they're learning about um, maybe harmonics in fourth position, something yes. like that, or maybe... Uh, bass percussion as well. So that they're learning about rhythms and also taking fingers away from the strings and coming back and finding where you're supposed to be. But and you manage to I'm write, right. yeah, you write for, you show them colors right away too. Hopefully, but, and, and, and I, hopefully, I think I've said before, I try and hide the technique mm -hmm. inside the music, but it is all technique and it does come back to Simandl because I still like the Simandl positions. I still use yes. them. And yes. I think it's a great shorthand and, and I know Maybe I'm old fashioned now, but I still like having some kind of, of shorthand so I can oh, say, yeah. okay, put your first finger in fifth position on the G string and right. my students go to an E flat. Okay. Right. Well, I could just teach them that where that E flat is. Yeah. But I, I like to know that they know where fifth position is and mm -hmm. they found it because of fourth position. And then you have muscle memory and hand shape and, and yeah. all these things. But I, yeah. I still come back to the Mandel because it's, Maybe he was a bigger influence than I realize. I think he was the foundation for so many thousands of bass players. I really mm -hmm. do. I mean, I think Cherney's etudes and music wouldn't be at probably maybe, maybe wouldn't even exist, but it wouldn't be as beautiful as it is without mm -hmm. the foundation that Samanda laid for. Mm -hmm. I feel like so many people, and you know, some people are like, oh, it's old school. 
But, you know, you'll have an old building that's beautifully built and it's still standing. I feel like mm -hmm. this is the same concept. It might be old, but it's still relevant. It's still good. I, I always say about Sam he was a pioneer and he yeah. was the first one really who brought it all together into one system. Mm -hmm. and, but because he did such a good job, we've been able to move forward from it, right. which is why we're where we are now. It's not that he was bad. He was of his time. Yes. But it was a system for the time. But it, it gave everyone a, a an opportunity to 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 learn that system and then find new ways of doing things. And and was I think my second teacher, Lawrence Gray, he had some of the pieces from the uh, the high school um, from Sam Andal. I think Sam Andal he published. I think it was forty nine pieces published by Schmidt, and I think mm. forty eight of them were for bass and piano, and one of them was a trio. Um, and Sam Andal, was one of the composers and he arranged pieces um, and he must have got lots of his friends or, or students to write pieces That's and we great. have an entire repertoire because of Simandl yeah. and, and it's fascinating it you know suddenly after all these years I think it was published in 1903 suddenly people are going back to this music and suddenly <laughs> realizing it, it's actually quite good music again it's of its time some of it is mm -hmm. it's characteristic or salon music but there's right. some really nice music there and I, so I think he did a really fantastic job. But also because he taught in Vienna, many of his students uh, emigrated to, to countries all over the world and took the Samandal system with them. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because when I was a kid, the book said Franz Samandal. Yes. And yeah. said he taught in Vienna. And so I just thought, oh, well, his first name is Franz and he mm -hmm. taught in Vienna. I assumed he was Austrian. Exactly. And it wasn't, it was probably maybe... Oh, it was less than 10 years ago where I realized his name wasn't just Franz, it was Frontichek, and that he was Czech. I yes. had no idea, and I felt so silly. But the publications here in America, at least, that I came across mentioned nothing about Czech school of bass playing and it was the, the influence. Same. We had exactly yeah. the same. He, he, oh, was, he was called Franz, so we all, I think, presumed he was German. Yeah. Um, and then once I started learning, I realized... And he studied at the Prague Conservator with uh, Jota Frabier. Um, mm -hmm. And then he, he, I think he moved, I think he did some playing, whatever. Then he eventually ended up in Vienna um, and played in the Imperial, um, I think, orchestra, and then part of the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. And then he started teaching there. Um, mm -hmm. But he was a really influential figure, really yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things I love in that new method book, and <laughs> not only <laughs> do I use it, I've I've built on it, and I think a lot of people have, is in the middle of the book, there are all these bowings, yes. duplet rhythms and triplet rhythms. And I remember an assignment when I was in school was to, you know, learn my scales and arpeggios. And yes. and Ed, Ed Barker would say, skip the etude at the top of the page. I want you to apply these to your scales and your your arpeggios. I said, okay, mm. this is great. And it was really fun and it was challenging and, and I would do it with two octave scales, three octave scales. They lie differently. You sometimes have to add a note depending on mm. how many octaves you're playing. And I loved it. It was kind of like a little mind puzzle. And then he gave me more from Galamian, the great violin yeah. teacher mm. and, and player. And now I, I see that Raboth's new book has like 800 or something. And, and I say to my students, these two little seemingly innocuous pages in the middle of this book, yes. to me, mm -hmm. that was the foundation of what got me where I am. There was mm -hmm. one summer where I locked myself, well, it was my parents' bedroom. It was the only room in the house that had an air conditioner. And <laughs> they let me practice in their room. And I would practice six hours a day, every day that summer just scales and arpeggios mm. with all of the Samandal and Galamian uh, mm. bowings and rhythms. And I would have a drone and from my tuner droning on tonic and I would have yes. a metronome making sure I didn't get too fast. And I remember one day my mom said to me, if I hear another scale out of you, so help me God, I'm going to kick you out of the house. <laughs> and, and I know it was driving them nuts. I mean, they had this we called it a screen house. It was this small screened in structure in their backyard. Yes. And they, they were relegated to that for the whole summer. They were doing their work <laughs> in there and eating their meals in there while I was using their bedroom and, and practicing. That fall, when I got back to school, I sat principal of the orchestra at school. I started freelancing yes. in Boston. I started subbing with the Boston Symphony and the Boston Pops. And I swear, 
that it was from doing that type of work. And I joke with my students, I say, oh, I don't need you to do that for your whole 12 week vacation, although you should consider it. But I feel like that's one of the reasons why I love Samandal, not just because I do love all the, the fingerings and the positions and things that he taught, mm -hmm. but that middle part of the bu book, mm -hmm. I sort of hinge all of the doors that open to me on mm. spending time there. Oh, that was so formative for me. And that was work I loved doing. Once in a while as a treat, I would flip back in the book and apply the Boeings to an etude. <laughs> and that was like, that was like giving me a piece of chocolate cake. It was wow. very exciting. And then I'd go back to the, just the scales and the arpeggios. That was such fun and rewarding work, but it was thanks to that Samandel book. Mm. I, I think it's been the foundation of many a career, Samantha. Yeah. And a, a yeah. lot of it is still relevant. It, it's that's the amazing thing about it. And yeah. what I, I found the the, the um, older I become, um, and it's it's interesting with with Samantha, the fingerings, uh, scale fingerings, often use as half and first position for the first octave, and then you move out the G string. Mm -hmm. And I could never quite work that out because in the studies, he's using all the positions across the strings. Yes. And I couldn't work out why he was doing that. And I, I come to the conclusion, I wonder if in his day, the G string was a good quality string and yeah. the other strings maybe weren't such good quality. So therefore you, you got off them as quickly as possible onto the nice string. And that I would wonder, make sense. Yeah, and I wonder, you know, because when you play a, a one octave scale with some handle fingering, I think it's four shifts going up, four shifts coming back. Mm -hmm. But when I teach my students, it's three shifts going up, three shifts coming back. Um, so you've got one shift fewer to play out of tune. Um, yeah. And also you're learning, which we've talked about many times, um, <laughs> but also you, you're learning all the, the middle positions up and down the strings yes. rather yeah. than just half and first. And, and that's yeah. why I like it. But I, I still come back to Samandal fingerings because a lot of the time they are still good. And with some passages of music, that might be the best fingering. Yeah. Um, sometimes it isn't. But if you know two or three different fingering patterns for every scale, um, yes it's really simple it's really oh, simple yes. but if you only know one it's not so good have you ever played any of his music i have not played well i played a couple there was the book of 30 etudes which of course mm. i've played those yes. but i've played i think one or two things that had like a piano accompaniment that mm. i recently i think you introduced me to mm. actually um but there's a lot of it right yeah there's a, a lovely nocturne um which which i publish and, yes. And it's, again, it, it's it's very much of its time, but it's really beautiful music. Um, yeah. And it uses the bass really well. I think he uses maybe a three octave range. I think he ends up with a, a three octave G major scale, if I remember rightly. Yes. Of yes. course he does. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then I think there's a, a really nice uh, scherzo capriccioso, I think it's that one, um, which I've, I've studied and learned, but never, never performed. Mm. Um, but also, I, I, the edition I had was Fred Zimmerman. Oh, yeah, sure. I see, which is, I thought was a nice edition. I enjoyed it. But then when I looked at the original Samandel edition, completely different. Oh, Fred no way. changed so many things. Oh. So I thought, ah, oh, right. So I need to come back and create a new edition of this. Yes. Which shows what Samandel um, did. But it, it was always interesting. I, I think I've just written a blog about it or something about the difference between what Simandl was doing in Central Europe and many of these composers, and what Bottasini was doing in Italy. And suddenly Bottasini was making the bass sing, and he, was sing he had melodies and using harmonics. You were really using the entire range of the bass. And yet in Central Europe, they were still playing, the these pieces still made up of scales and arpeggios and broken right. arpeggios and a few little little tunes in, in thumb position and in, in um, harmonics. And it's so interesting how they... They both existed side by side and are both right. so totally different, but so also relevant because yeah. both aspects of, of what have enabled us, I think, to move on to to where we are today. I wonder, did the two of them ever encounter each other, Samandel and Bottasini? I I don't think so. Um yeah. but I, I I've I read somewhere that I think it's one of Samandel's students, and he said he'd heard both of them play. Um, and he's, I think Bottasini had a, a chamber bass for solo playing, whereas mm. Samandel had a, a, I think, was it Galliano? Or, uh, I can't remember what he had, I think oh, quite okay. a famous bass. Uh, but I think it was a big orchestral bass. Yeah. So I, th I think he said that Bottasini was best for the solo playing, whatever. But sure. the sort of quality of sound, um, 
Simandl was better. Having said that, there's something else I read about Simandl went to to Moscow um, and they just heard Kuzovitsky play all these fantastic things. Mm. Um, and then they heard Simandl play and they said he wasn't a patch on Kuzovitsky. So, <laughs> But wouldn't it have been wouldn't it have been interesting to to have been able to hear all these? How incredible! Really how good they were. Mm. Yeah, that would have been such an amazing thing. You know, you were talking about how you should know a few different fingerings for each scale. Mm. <clears throat> I tell my students, you know, there's the traditional like what Samantha will do: just cross mm. the strings, get to the G as quickly as possible, and travel up the G. And um, I was sort of encouraged to learn four different fingerings. So basically, mm. you're crossing over to the G and go up there, crossing over to the D going up into thumb position and then going to the G, mm. crossing over to the A going to thumb position, you know, that sort of a thing. Yes. But then of course my analytical mind got a little out of control and I found 12 options for every scale. And so that summer of scales, as I yes. call it, was 12, finger, uh, 12 different fingerings for every major and every minor, all three flavors, scales. Uh -huh. And I had 200, rhythms and bowings. Wow. And so I would pick either one scale with one fingering and a bunch of rhythms and bowings, one scale with multiple fingerings and, you know, choose just a couple of rhythms and bowings, or I would do one rhythm or bowing with a whole bunch of scales. Like it was different. Every day was a different challenge and I could choose how I wanted to do it. And how's the therapy? Is it, is it working? Is well, it you know, the therapy is ongoing. <laughs> And it's, it's more for my family too. Oh my God, my poor mom. I remember my dad saying to her, we can't tell her to stop. Don't you hear she's getting better? We've got to let her do this. And my mom was like, I can't handle just listening to this. I mean, double bass scales for hours and hours a day. I think they need to be sainted. <laughs> I might have so to be funny. in touch with the Vatican. But I, you know it knowing the fingerboard that well, starting with the, the Samandal foundation of fingerings and then kind of extrapolating and going from there. Mm. I think that was such a solid way to start. Mm. It's, you know, and when I was about 15, I, I think I did my first base exam, mm. um, which I, I'm not sure you have them in the States, but it's the associated board. They have exams, I think about 120, 30 countries. Um, and the great, I think I started with grade four um, and grade four. And he had a, a study by Simandl in D flat major. Ooh. And because my teacher had that book, he, did, he didn't consider any of the other studies. He said, oh, we'll do that one. And it's four lines of quarter notes of crotchets in yes. D flat major. And I don't think there were many open strings. And I think <laughs> no, they can't be. <laughs> wow. And you, you suddenly feel what, what strain is on your hand oh, yeah. when you get to the end of line four. It, it yep. was hard. Oh, yep. I was just working to get towards the end of line four and I could stop. Oh, yeah. it was just it's like, like the light oh, at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. But nowadays I wouldn't have even, I wouldn't have given that to even the student I hated. I would have given <laughs> that <laughs> I, I did once. I, I know that, I know that etude. I had a student who wanted to do a lot of like Broadway shows, things with singers. And, and that was really. perfect for that, isn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. And I said to him, okay, I said, I'm not doing this to be mean. And I pulled it out and in my book, it's page 20. I just looked it up as you yeah. were talking. Um, and I said to him, you're going to have to love D flat major because somehow the human voice gravitates not to D major, not to C major, but to what I call one of the crack keys. We're just falling yeah. in the cracks here. Where there's yeah. like n no open strings to save us, nothing. I said, you've got to be able to play this. I said, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm not going to make you play it now you're going to have to take this home and practice it. And yes. you're going to have to stay in D flat. You can't drift up to D or go down to C. <laughs> and he came back to me and he was like, oh, I think I hate this. But I'll tell you, he did this work and he's playing in all theaters all around New England. He's playing all the Broadway shows and he's doing a great job of it. And I think you're right. Those, those, There's two etudes in this book in D flat major. And there's a couple of half notes <laughs> and they're mostly quarter notes. And it's not one of the fun dum ba da dum bum 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 bum. It's none of those. It's just like da ya da da dum da da dum 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 type thing. And you think, yeah. oh God, this isn't gonna stop. <laughs> but it's really helpful. You learn your way around D flat mm -hmm. major so well. And for some of us, that's important. 
But I, I think I teach Samandal without teaching Samandal yeah. because everything I teach is technique based and yes. scales and arpeggios and hand shapes and thumb position and all these things. Um, and I, I use a system which I, it isn't Samandal because it's, it's sort of my own. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's all based on Samandal. Like I come back to all the positions and I really think it's, it's a great grounding for any student. I agree. I, I know for sure I'm teaching the Samandal's fingering yeah. system. I kind of wrap it into your two George books, mm. uh, depending on the level of the student, but it's still the same concept and it. it's mm. completely rooted in Samandal. And that's what I love about your two George books. Tell them you're going to have to tell people what they're called because they, they're music. These pieces are pieces of music it's kind of like there are these chicken nuggets now that they make in america where they grind yeah. up vegetables and shove it in so that the kids yeah. are having vegetables mm. it seems really gross um but it's a way to get the non-vegetable eating children to eat their vegetables i feel like that's what i can do with the, these george books is kind of hide the technique but they're excited because they're playing pieces of music i, I think i i try to make them interesting because maybe some of the things I, I learned when I was studying weren't interesting. Yeah. It was, you, you, it, you're learning them for technical reasons, yep. um, but they didn't really inspire you. So I, I've always tried to uh, make it interesting musically as well as technically. As I say, I, I always try and hide the technique in there. The, yeah. One of your students played uh, Dumka from the Hertel yes. series. Yes, yes. Um, and that, that's in F minor. And that was to demonstrate that F minor is a beautiful key to playing on it bass. Is. It is. Um, and on the whole, most of the notes are moving by step. Right. But then what I, I did with that one is I set myself a challenge of uh, three bar phrases. Which yes. You, you rarely get. And, I, right. and I, I really enjoyed writing three bar phrases. And, yeah. uh, but it, it's just trying to, to show students that you can play in any key if you have mm -hmm. technique. Mm -hmm. If you haven't got technique, it's the same problem whichever key you're in it doesn't make any difference right right yeah it's it's sort of you know the technique on the bass the key shouldn't really matter because you mm. should be able to get around the fingerboard and know where each note is but mm. I, you know my analytical I, i'm a very analytical minded person and i know that and i was very comfortable with the samandal etudes because i felt that they were pretty analytical but then yeah. when it came time for me to be mus musical shape a phrase oh, i was petrified and i would think well as long as i have you know my good left hand posture good yeah. hand shape and and my pitch is good and my technique is good and then i was like oh god i'm not thinking about phrasing once again yes. <laughs> and you know as i got older i got better at at that i think i hope um but I find that with my students, I have to skip around in the Samando book and not, not mm. be like, let's start at the beginning and go through the whole thing. But I can still, that's still, I'm, t I'm teaching it to them. I think that's the secret. I, th I think, yeah, if you start at the beginning, I think it's, it is quite boring and quite dusty. Um, but I think picking and choosing which yeah. etude at, at a certain time, I think it, it's, it's pure gold, really. And you, yeah. you're talk, we're talking now about this, and I'm thinking, I've, I've got the summer coming up. I've got um, quite a few weeks of holiday. I might buy a new edition of book two um, with better fingerings. And, yeah. and uh, no, I might go back to my old one. I, I like the, <laughs> <laughs> the old one. And I, I think yeah, I'm going to go through the whole book again because I enjoyed Excellent. it so much. And it's just pure technique. It's, it is. Um, and sometimes you just need to focus on pure technique. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's, it's so really good. You're going to, this podcast has helped you to decide you're going to have a summer of some handle. Thank you very much, Susan. <laughs> David Hayes, this has been great. This is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening to episode four of Base Talk with Hagen and Hayes. And we would like to thank our sponsors. Oh, we don't have any. Would you like to be our sponsor? You can reach out to us. Our emails are accessible through our little podcast uh, distribution. And we look forward to hearing from you. And I look forward to doing another podcast with you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye, David. Thank you. Bye, Susan.